Pro TV. This is episode 22. Um, and we're talking about spit today, sort of. Uh, we're talking about nutrigenomics, um, which is DNA testing that gives you some really, really cool data. But to the <laughs> It does not seem so hard, and this isn't even a whole hollow tube. Like the tube starts like up here, like this is all just empty space. The tube starts here, and you just have to spit to fill it up to about here, which isn't very much. And as soon as, um, so, so the registered dietitian that I have work with our athletes, her name is Lisa Chianfrini. If you're in the London area, she's the best. Um, she even works with some of my online goalies, actually, too, online, uh, online obviously, duh. Um, but she's like, okay, just spit to fill this up. It's like, okay. And then as soon as I go, it's like, like, there's no spit. <laughs> it's like my spit factory turned off. I don't know why. Um, I can't pee in front of people, so apparently maybe I just can't make spit in front of people either. But um, we eventually got her. So you just spit in here, and then you seal it. And in the lid, you can see the blue stuff. You put that on, that's a stabilizer. We mail it off to the lab, and then the results come back um, to Lisa. And then we sat down and went over all the results. So what I'm gonna do is go over these results with you, just to show you the kind of information that you can get from, um, from this nutrigenomics. So this is my report, it's several pages, um, and it's fairly small prints. So I have to get on my bifocals, which we call transitions now. They're transitions please but it's a 31 page report so it gives us a summary page here but then it goes through everything so basically you're going to come out with typical risk factors elevated risk factors low risk factors um, diminished risk slightly elevated uh, and such so it looks at uh, it looks at everything so, um, one of the things that's pretty cool is that, so yeah, so basically you have genetic markers that give you predispositions to what kinds of foods you can eat, what kinds of activity you're predisposed towards. So that's the first part. It's like fitness and physical activity. So it's like um, your motivation to exercise. Unbelievably, this is a genetic thing. Mine is typical. Um, your exercise behavior typical so it's like you have a, a typical likelihood to engage in activity um, now yeah so if you just don't ever work out because you're lazy don't be like oh, that's probably my genetics <laughs> um, power and strength is is typical so your potential to engage in power sports it's is typical this was interesting because it said well my um, endurance is enhanced. You have a genetic advantage to excel in endurance sports, which is like, yeah, totally. My varsity sport was cross country ski racing, and then I, I rode competitively after university uh, for several years. So it's like, yeah, that, you know, I, I was never the one doing the 100 meter sprint. Uh, it has for your pain tolerance, if it's typical or elevated. This one kind of stopped me in my tracks a bit. Achilles tendon injury elevated. So I do, I will go through periods where I, when I wake up or, you know, get up, I'll have stiffness right in my Achilles tendon or if I start running, it'll be stiff. But you know, I, I like you guys. Yeah, but when I run, after I run half a mile or so, it loosens up and it feels fine. Well, you know, when you have that stiffness and a little irritation, the tissue is remodeling and it's remodeling to be a little more plastic a little less elastic, and that's how um, Achilles tendon ruptures usually happen. Are we getting a thunderstorm right now? Holy snapper. Like it was snowing yesterday. Um, so that was like, whoa, you know, I better, I would have never thought of that in a million years. So I really try to pay attention to keeping my um, calves nice and like foam rolled or use a lacrosse ball and keep them stretched out. And if they get feeling stiff like that, I don't ignore it anymore like I used to. Um, your vitamin A, your vitamin B12. So again, vitamin B12 was one that I was elevated. So then it t gives me recommendations um, you know, on whether, yeah, maybe you could consider a supplement, but it also gives you a whole list of foods that are higher in vitamin B12, that things that you could get in your natural diet. She actually said that my results were pretty, a little bit weird. 
not weird, but a little bit different. She's like, you know what, you're actually one of the, like the, the few people who probably would do better on more of a paleo style diet. Um, she said, or like a Mediterranean type of diet, which totally makes sense because my grandmother um, was Greek. So, you know, and there were some foods she just couldn't eat because they wouldn't, she couldn't digest them when she came to North America. So uh, vitamin C, typical vitamin D. So um, my risk to be deficient in vitamin D is elevated. So again, it's like, hey, I should, I should probably supplement. Plus we live in Canada where it's dark all winter and sometimes half the spring is dark too. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's, it's like, oh, okay, you know, that's cool. Vitamin E is typical, folate is elevated, so I need to make sure I'm getting enough folate. Uh, iron overload, I have a very low risk of getting iron overload. Some people will hold uh, more iron than others, and that can be um, a problem. It can be like a toxic thing for them. So, But my risk factor for low iron status is elevated, so that means that I need to be careful that I'm getting enough iron, and that's even when I skied, I would often be, and I thought it was just because I was skiing so much, um, but it was, I would have low iron, so we'd have to supplement there, which if you've ever had to take iron supplements, not the most fun if you like to poop every so often. I'll just leave it at that. Um, this was interesting too, caffeine. So my tolerance for caffeine is diminished. Um, so it's like, hey, you should, you should limit yourself to this much caffeine per day, which is 100% true. If I drank even a regular coffee every day, even just like a regular size one every day, then I would get like shaking right out of my boots. Um, if I have like a Tim Hortons dark roast, I'm gonna be jittering like for a good six hours. Uh, so that, that, like it's really, it's so cool. Oh, this was cool too because probably a year and a half or two years ago, I started not gluten-free because I knew I wasn't for sure not celiac, but I just noticed that I did feel better when I ate less uh, wheat products, um, or let, you know, it, which also helps you just not eat crappy food. But my stomach did feel a little bit better. And so then this came back that I'm at an elevated risk. I have trouble, um, some trouble digesting um, whole grains, and I also have trouble um, metabolizing starch. So it's not, it has nothing to do with gluten. Actually, my risk for gluten, um, intolerance was very low, but it's it's the grains and the starches that I have some trouble digesting. So that was pretty cool. Sodium, need to watch my sodium intake. Calcium is typical. Oh, I already was there. I'm going the wrong way. I'm going the wrong way. Um, Omega-3 fatty acids, typical. Saturated fat, typical. Um, energy balance. Typical uh, back into physical activity. Protein metabolism is typical, so it's just kind of, you know, it kind of tells you that, um, you know, consume 20 to 30 percent of your energy from protein. Uh, my fat metabolism is typical. So, um, since you possess these variants, of the specific gene, I have a typical weight loss response based on my fat intake. However, to help ensure that I'm consuming a healthy, well-balanced diet, consume 20 to 35% of my total daily energy needs um, from fat as part of a controlled energy diet. Then it goes into saturated fats and unsaturated fats. So um, I have an enhanced um, response. So since, since I have these variants of the gene, I can enhance my weight loss by limiting saturated fat intake to less than 10% of total energy intake and consume the rest of my recommended daily intake from unsaturated fats. Um, so it's just, yeah, I need to watch saturated fats because my body um, will tend to store them more. <laughs> it's kind of funny because I'm having like pictures in my mind because my Yaya was, um, she was only four foot eight, but um, she weighed probably like 165, 75 pounds in her day. So she was a she was a large woman, so I keep thinking like, man, I wonder if like it like when I'm, you know, because I probably don't remember her until she was like 65. Like, wouldn't that be hilarious when I'm 65? I'm just like round, like, and my fingers turn into sausages like hers, and it would be kind of fun. I might start speaking with a Greek accent if that happens, and wearing a babushka or something. But uh, yeah, so it's like okay, that's good. Monounsaturated fats, normal. 
Uh, lactose, slightly elevated. So actually this was one thing Maya couldn't drink cow's milk. Um, and actually didn't really drink any milk. So um, Lisa said when she went over this all with me, she said that I shouldn't stop drinking milk or eating dairy products um, because then then I really would like lose the ability to metabolize them probably or digest them I should say properly so she said you know but just have an eye and that maybe as probably as I get older I might get more sensitive to it so if I start noticing that oh geez every time I have milk or whatever I get an upset stomach um, you know that might be why but I don't drink a lot of milk anyway um, I usually have all the milk we have like a bit of cheese with our snack every day. Gluten, gluten, I'm good to go. I'm low risk of gluten intolerance. Says so right on the paper. Um, this is interesting, fat taste perception. So some people can't taste like the fat in foods and then they might overeat fatty foods. Um, but this one for me, it was typical. So it's like, yeah, if I'm eating hamburger, <laughs> I know it's a hamburger. Uh, it has for sugar preference. So yeah, some people are just really, that sugar taste, it actually, you know, hits pleasure centers in their brain and they're just like, yes, uh, I'm just kind of normal. Like, yeah, it's sugar, whatever. Eating between meals, I'm at an elevated uh, risk <laughs> for eating between meals, uh, which is kind of funny, but I kind of eat that way anyways. Like I eat my breakfast, like a small breakfast, and then I have my snack, almond, like some almonds and a small piece of cheese at around 8.30. Then I have my lunch around 11.30, 12. Then I have my milkshake around one or two o'clock and then I have my supper so I kind of do that anyway but it's it's this tells you though you know if you know that you often go and get the cheeseburger or you don't plan for that eating in between um, and you then you're gonna grab chips or a chocolate bar or something it kind of is like okay you know you got to really just be aware um, there's the starch so um, since I possess this this variant of the gene I have a decreased ability to digest and metabolize starches focus on vegetables fruits and grains that are low in starch to meet my carbohydrate needs limit my intake of high starch foods which I thought was pretty kind of cool um, and, it, and it tells you too like so like it says like one in ten people have that variant you know, in some it's like one in two people have this variant or whatever. So it lets you know that if you're a special snowflake or not. Um, motivation to exercise, typical, we went over that. Power and strength, typical. Endurance enhanced. Um, yeah, like, yeah, your tolerance of pain is typical. Uh, Achilles injury is elevated. So it's pretty cool. Um, and then I asked Lisa too, like, if, um, and I asked her I sincerely actually, because my granddad was an alcoholic and not that we drink a whole bunch, but it was like, hey, like, does this tell you too, like if genetically you're at risk for, or like, like heart attack or like alcoholism or depression or any, you know, things like that. And um, she's like, it could, but they don't put it in the thing. She's like, cause we don't really want to be having that discussion with people, <laughs> and, you know, so, but uh, it's pretty interesting. So it's called nutrigenomics um, and you spit in the tube and then it tells you this. Um, I've, I've had the results for probably a year or so. Um, and it has changed the way I eat. It's definitely changed the way I look after my Achilles tendon and my calves. And yeah, I do, uh, I do, I do feel better. So that's the scoop gang. Um, have a good one. We'll catch you later. This is Goalie Training Pro TV. If you like it, give us a thumbs up or a big smiley face or even like a ha 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 or whatever you got there. If you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, all you can do is give it a thumbs up. But if you have any questions or want to see any other um, content, uh, a suggestion for an episode of Goalie Training Pro TV, then just um, put that in the comments section. And I answer all the comments myself. So. Uh, we'll see you there. Bye.